keep it on me. Tell me when you're gonna start. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd. Continuing on in our discussion about fasting, we reach the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا تقدموا رمضان بصوم يوم يومي يوم أو يومين إلا رجل كان يصومه صوما فليصومه رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it shows us that we should not fast right before Ramadan when it's uh, when it's a day or two before Ramadan. Those last days. Right before Ramadan in Sha'ban, uh, we should not fast those two days. And here's what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abu Huraira. He it said, on, uh, uh, related by Abu Huraira, who he said that the Messenger of Allah has said, Do not precede Ramadan by fasting by one day or two days. Except for the man that he, it is his habit to fast, then he can fast it. And this is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith shows us several benefits. That the person who it's their regular habit, meaning that they regularly fast, for example, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, or those other uh, days during the month that are from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the person who fasts those normal days, that that's their habit, then for them it's okay to proceed Ramadan because it falls on one of their days. But someone who doesn't regularly fast, they cannot fast the uh, a day or two before Ramadan. And we'll look at why. So the first benefit of this hadith is that it shows us that it is pro- a prohibition. Nahi an taqaddam Ramadan bi siyam yawman o yawmain. That is prohibited to fast uh, before Ramadan, a day or two before Ramadan. Uh, the second benefit we gain from this hadith is that there's a rukhsa, that there's uh, that it's been made permissible, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that someone can do that if it is their regular habit. For example, they fast, as we mentioned, uh, on Mondays and Thursdays. That's their habit, and it, and it falls, and Ramadan falls, for example, on a Jumwa, and that person was fasting on that Thursday. So then, in that situation, it will be permissible, but it's, it's better to avoid that, but it's permissible. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet wasallam is from the hikmah of that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, is that this helps to distinguish the fara'id from the nawafil, from the, the, the obligatory acts of worship, those wajib acts, from those acts which are extra, where you get extra reward. So by not fasting the day or two before Ramadan, you are preparing for Ramadan and preparing your energy and your desire for fasting. And that it also helps to distinguish those two acts of ibadah, which are both great, which is fasting, nawafil, extra uh, extra fasting, and of course, more than that, which is greater than that, is fasting the holy month of Ramadan. Those are some of the benefits that Sheikh Ali Bassam, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah have mercy upon him and, and bless him with Jannah for those that he mentioned regarding this hadith, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Uh, another benefit of this hadith also is that it is it, uh, it shows us, it illustrates for us that it is permissible to fast three days before Ramadan, that that is uh, permissible. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and accept our fasting.